Welcome to Florida Home Builders Radio. Stone Payton here with you with the Business Radio X Network. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast for today's episode, Mr. Greg Madavina. How are you, sir? I'm doing great today, Stone. I'm, I'm healthy and everybody in my family is healthy and I hope the same is true with you and your family. Well, it certainly is, and it's plenty to be thankful for. I know we've got a great deal that we want to talk about with respect to some of these new programs coming out to offer some relief to business people. But before we get into the weeds on that, can you give our listeners just a little bit of an overview of your work in the, in the community and your role with the Florida Home Builders Association? Sure, Stone. Um, first of all, my background is uh, I'm a CPA, but I also am a land developer. And I have served uh, with the Florida Home Builders Association in the chair. So that means I was president. Uh, and I think that was three years ago. And uh, they still keep me around from time to time to help out. And with with my land development practice and my I actually have a small CPA practice, uh, been very intimately involved in uh, the breaks that the government is offering uh, at this point in time to help keep the economy going during this uh, this coronavirus. So that kind of gives you the background of uh, where I'm coming from and, and what I have to, have to say today. If you can remember, what compelled you to get involved with the Florida Home Builders Association in the early days? Well, Stone, if you want to know the truth, in the early days, uh, what happened is uh, I just felt like it was time for me to uh, give back to uh, an industry that uh, that had done so much for me. Um, but as time progressed more and more and I got more involved, I just it just blew me away how much the Florida Home Builders Association and your local home builders uh, association they do and, and at the national level to uh, to further our industry. So it was a it was a kind of a tenuous decision in the beginning, but it got reaffirmed more and more as time passed. All right. So today we're here to talk about the Small Business Paycheck Protection Program. You have some insight on this and some counsel for our members, yeah? I do. I do. The program really, in a nutshell, is quite simple, although when you read it, it can be a little confusing. There are two components to the program. The amount of of a loan you can get is equal to 2.5 times your average monthly payroll, typically based on 2019 or maybe even the 12 months ended in February. So if you have a payroll processing firm, they can help you come up with the information that you need to satisfy the bank you're applying through to uh, get that information. So that determines the amount of your loan. Now, on the back side, what happens is you can actually have up to two months worth of payroll, eight weeks forgiven of your actual payroll going forward. Once the loan is approved and you get your money, two months or I mean, eight weeks can be forgiven. Plus, if you have a mortgage payment on your commercial structure, the mortgage payment can be thrown into the forgiven pot. Or if you rent a commercial structure for use in your business, and then utilities. And there are some other things that can get thrown in also, uh, including maybe group health plans and some other employee benefits. So don't get confused between the, the way the loan is computed at 2.5 times payroll and the way the forgiveness is computed. They're two separate calculations. It sounds like they belong together, but they don't. The other thing I want to mention, Stone, is that the terms on these loans, as I understand it, and they seem to change daily, but the terms on these loans are such that, so let's say you got an $80,000 loan. That was two and a half times your your average monthly payroll, and $60,000 of it got forgiven. Well, you still have to pay back then $20,000, but my understanding is there are no payments due for six months. And then at the end of six months, I am surmising, I haven't seen it clearly stated, that you pay interest only for 18 months. And that interest 
Originally, it came out at one half of 1%, not 5%, one wow. half of 1%. That's my understanding that uh, Secretary Munchen announced yesterday that they're increasing that to 1%. But in any event, the interest is only 1% uh, per annum, and you don't have to pay the principal back for uh, another 18 months or a total to loan term of two years. There are supposed to be no closing costs on this, no fees, no no closing costs. Wow, that's impressive. And it, it's it's getting me kind of excited. On the other hand, it's also making me wish I hadn't laid off the crew last week. I mean, I'm just making this up. I'm not a builder. But if if can I go back and, and rehire them and it would still it would still apply here? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So you can get your next eight weeks payroll covered and your rent and your utilities. So if you're going to pay your rent and your utilities anyway, and you're going to get the government to pay for the eight weeks where the payroll, put those people back on the payroll and find something for them to do. So what are some of the eligibility requirements? You can't have more than, you must have, I think, at least two employees stone, and you have to have less than uh, 500 um, nonprofits are eligible. Uh, Self-employed individuals are eligible. So instead of providing payroll documentation, they would just provide evidence of their uh, amount of self-employment earnings. Um, Other than that, there aren't a whole lot of requirements other than the fact that you have some payroll. And this is something that's coming down the pike in the coming days, or it's something that's already here? What's the timing on all this? The timing stone is now. They just opened up this morning uh, the uh, application process. And your best bet is to go to the bank that you already bank with. Hopefully they're an SBA lender. And if they are, they will have an application uh, online that you can fill out and email them in all the necessary information so that uh, you can get your loan process. These loan funds are limited. And so you want to get your application in today, if not over the weekend at the latest. If you are a self-employed individual, you cannot apply until next Friday. Is it like some of these other programs that I've heard of where, where I'm supposed to have tried some other sources first and now I'm coming to this? Or is this a little bit outside that set of rules? This is outside of that set of rules. As long as you are going to use it for the eligible uh, payments, which is payroll and rent and utilities and and employee benefits, uh, then you do not have to have applied for any other loans. And I would tell you that I have already filled out the application for this, and the application is pretty simple. And you're not providing, other than payroll information, you're not providing a bunch of financial statements and tax returns and ad infinitum of, of documentation. It doesn't go through your typical underwriting uh, that, a, that a loan would go through. Do you have a feel yet, and you may not, on the, the kind of turnaround we can expect in terms of an answer and actual funding for, for these? I'd be taking a wild guess, but my, you know, the government is saying it's going to be days. I'm going to say it's going to take at least a week, uh, if not two weeks, for uh, from the time you apply, because I think banks are going to be inundated to begin with, and they're going to have trouble getting it turned around on their end. Well, and that's why your council is act now. Don't wait around. I mean, I think this program is going to be available for for a, a little while. I would think it would be, but your council is jump on this. You, you should not wait one minute. Here's the way I got to look at it, Stone. My payroll at my company is roughly three thousand dollars a month. Uh, there's only four of us. I calculated out the loan forgiveness and it comes out to somewhere in excess of $25,000. It's going to take me maybe an hour to apply. That's a pretty good hourly rate for a <laughs> CPA or anybody, $25,000 an hour. So, uh, but I, I've already seen numbers of uh, a not-for-profit that I'm associated with. They're, they're going to be applying for $400,000 of which they think about three hundred and. Twenty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars will be forgiven. Wow. Okay. Before we wrap, let's just kind of walk through step by step. I may be hearing this, uh, you know, right now, and I'm going to dedicate maybe the afternoon and getting this thing together. Let's just hit some of the high points for the steps 
Yeah, you're suggesting go online and get to the application, or would you just go ahead and go to a to a lender if I if I have a relationship with one? I would definitely call my lender and I or my banker, whoever I bank with, and I would start right there. And if they say we're not an SBA lender, which most banks are, then I would ask. They all have friends in the banking business. I would say, well, refer me to somebody. Uh, And then at that point, they, you know, they may point you to the online application because it may not be quite in their their department to handle. They may not. They may say, hey, let me help you with the application here over the phone and then you can email me the backup data. So I would say the starting point stone is definitely with the person you already have a relationship with. And one phone call that might make sense to make as well somewhere in this process, if you are working through a, a, a payroll company, right? That's helping you put all this stuff so that you can get that documentation together. Absolutely. I mean, most payroll companies have an online portal that you can go to, but if you're an old dinosaur like me, you might struggle with an online portal so that you can just uh, give them a call and hopefully they can help you walk through you, walk you through the, the process of getting what you need. This is one of the great advantages of the Florida Home Builders Association. We have so many marvelous resources, people with specialized knowledge and expertise right here in our organization. I think we should continue to try to tap into that. If someone wanted to reach out and have a conversation with you or somebody on your team, is it appropriate maybe for, a, for them to have a, access to a, to a LinkedIn or a website or something like that that we could share with them? Well, how about if they just send me an email directly to G Matavina, G M A T O V I N A at Matavina dot com and I'll do what I can to help them. Well, Greg, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this information. And with your permission, we're very likely to reach back out and maybe uh catch up with you and follow up on this and future developments. And, uh, you know, look, we got to, we got to all hang in on this and work together. This is a, been an absolute pleasure and I sincerely appreciate you investing the time to share this with our members. Thanks for having me stone. And thank you for sharing this information with our members. I think it's very important. All right. This is stone Payton for the Florida home builders radio and our guest today, Greg Matavina and everyone here at the business radio X family saying we'll see you next time on Florida Home Builders Radio.